start. All right. Can you see it now? Give it a second. Do not see anything yet. There it goes. All right. Can you see it? Okay. You are live. So it appears that there is a 10 or 15 right. second delay. All right. So uh, we tried this a moment ago. Um, and apparently it wasn't feeding out, but we believe it's feeding out now because now I can see people joining. Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Tom Myers. And this is George Hogan. All right. We are here to discuss some of the issues that have come up due to the coronavirus COVID-19. Uh, first, uh, everybody, we will be answering questions. So please uh, go ahead and put it down um, in the column. But please, there's a 10 or 15 second delay as far as I can tell. So we may not get your question right away. So I'm going to start off with some very simple statements. Um, as everybody is aware, this COVID-19 crisis is affecting the entire country. Boston has shut down all construction projects for two weeks. The state of California has made it mandatory uh, for people to stay home. Pennsylvania has shut down all non-emergency or life-sustaining businesses. As of now, today, uh, there have been no shutdowns, um, there have been no mass closures of our job sites, a few have shut down. Um, everybody needs to recognize that this is a national crisis that nobody, and I mean nobody, was prepared for. Uh, we are used to downturns in the economy, we are used to shocks to a specific market, uh, but this is a national crisis and everybody's learning as we go. Uh, I would like to explain some of the steps the local has taken to ensure that in the event somebody becomes uh, unemployed, I would like to explain what the national IBW NECA agreement means for each and every one of you, uh, and we will do each one of them in turn. Once again, I would like to make sure of everybody's aware, uh, Danny, uh, your job shut down yesterday because someone tested positive and wants to reopen again on Monday. How can they reopen if everybody hasn't been tested? Danny, we are not medical professionals, all right? However, uh, we have been in contact with the CDC because of an experience we had here yesterday, um, and it is first-person contact. If somebody was on the job and they had the symptoms and they were tested positive, then your company may be required to shut it down. But if it was second or third person, all they need to do is to shut the job down for a while, assess the situation, and then they can open up. This falls on the contractor. The same way George Hogan, your business manager, was yes. required to make that decision yesterday? Yes, I had to make that decision yesterday, brothers and sisters. I was posed with a problem that one of the staff members here, one of their significant <coughs> other, was on a job site where somebody tested positive. So checking with the CDC after shutting the building down, because I talked with our legal staff and they said that immediate shutdown was the appropriate thing to do. So we followed suit and, and shut everything down until we had more information. Look, brothers and sisters, I do not like shutting the hall down. But when I'm ordered to, because my legal staff says it's the appropriate thing to do, I'm going to do what's best for this local. Now, after further investigation, we found out that there's extenuating circumstances to this. Its contact. first contact is the one that you have to worry about the most. The person that we are involved with here at the office was third contact. So they're saying that that is not, you know, uh, a big problem. So barring any, in, you know, interference by local governments or state governments or federal government over the weekend, we plan on opening the offices up back on Monday. Yes. And we will get back to normal operations as best we can. Gentlemen, we have a question from Zach Bird. If I got furloughed today, okay. what should I do? Okay, Zach, if you were furloughed today, that is because the IBW and NECA has agreed to allow furloughs. Typically, the IBW does not recognize furloughs. If you were furloughed, the IBW and NECA has agreed that essentially you are still employed by your company, but they do not have any work for you, so you can and should go file for unemployment. The company is not allowed to contest it, 
They are not allowed to oppose it in any way, shape, or form. All right? Now, when you go file for unemployment, ah, brothers yes. and sisters, make sure that you put down your company's name that you are working for, not the local. If, if you put the local down, you will slow your processing up. So if you are working for whatever contractor, make sure you put them down as your employer, not Local 26. Because we've had this instance happen before, and what the process is, it ends up coming to us, and then it has to be sent back, so you're just stopping yourself from getting paid. Now this agreement is a temporary agreement between IBW and NECA, between the internationals of both. Lonnie Stevenson and David Long both signed this and put it enacted it in last week. Now, the furloughs, like I said, are only a temporary situation. So if you have any problems with that, contact your company that you got furloughed from and let them know if you're having some problem. They should not be interfering with you getting unemployment at all. Okay. Would you like another question? Yes, uh, I got one from Robert Davis. So I lost my job a few weeks ago. How does this affect me getting a job right now? As of this moment, if you were on the books, you are still on the books, assuming that you re-sign before the 25th of the month. If you need to re-sign, you can do that via email, the same way you always have. Like we've said earlier, the referral agents are currently working right now, today, and they have signed people onto the books. Um, <clears throat> They have signed people on to the books who uh, otherwise probably would not have been able to sign the books. Um, but they are currently working right now, today, with full access to everything that they can do. The job calls have kind of trickled down a little bit. We expect them to pick up. Um, and like you, as you're aware, the COVID-19 has everybody a little bit stretched right now. So everything is working the way it's supposed to be. I've been answering phone calls all day and all night. Uh, George has been answering phone calls all day and all night. Rhett Rowe is still working. Will Ng is still working. Rich Wilkinson is still working. All of the agents are still working. All right. Uh, what really happened was that the building had to be closed, and it took us a couple of hours to get the VPM access so that people could work from other locations. That's all that happened. So you might be asking yourself, why did we put uh, April 2nd on the web page? That was an, out of an overabundance of caution. We did not want to have to say, hey, we're opening on Monday, and then say, oh, no, we can't open on Monday. <clears throat> we did put on there that it was subject to change. All right? I hope that According answers your question. According to the rules, if you have had an exposure, you have to be shut down or quarantined for 14 days. The reason I shut the building down is if there was some type of infection in here i did not want any member coming in and being exposed to it we had already been exposed so there was nothing we could do about that but like i said after further investigation we found out that the situation was not as bad as we thought at first but at that time i did not know that so i have to react with the best of my ability and my decision was to shut the building down rather than take a chance of somebody else becoming exposed. I know there's been a lot of talk on Facebook about it, about how horrible I am because I shut the building down. Brothers and sisters, I have to make decisions every day. And some of them are not the best decisions that I like to make, shall I say. But nonetheless, that's my job and I have to make those decisions. So when it has to do with brothers and sisters possibly being harmed by something in here, I'm going to close the building rather than take the chance of you or your loved ones becoming involved in a possible exposure. Uh -huh. So this is what I do. I have to do it, and that's my job. I would like to add one point to that. Um, we have uh, been asked, uh, why wasn't everybody notified prior to it? Um, by the there was probably about 26 minutes from the moment the business manager found out that there was a possible exposure until everybody except key staff, myself, the business manager, the recording secretary, the members of the executive board, and two admins, and uh, the director of the JATC left the building. We stayed here to make sure that we could come up with a plan so that we could keep the business running, and we are doing it pretty successfully. Scott, I noticed that you're asking if you can ask a question. I can see your, so just go ahead and type the question and we will get to it. 
There is a question on here for uh, a Kyle Edward Doyle. Um, and I believe <coughs> that the um, director of the JATC would be best suited to answer this question. So, Chris, if you could come around here for a second. Yeah. All right. The question says, I'm in the process of applying for the apprenticeship deadline. For the apprenticeship, deadline is the 31st of this month. My local school district where I graduated is on hard shutdown until the 29th. So I have no access to my high school transcripts. What should I do? Kyle, I'll tell you the same thing we've been telling everybody. Make sure that you've <clears throat> applied by the deadline. And due to this, we'll, we'll make exceptions to everyone that needs to get their paperwork in. Uh, we'll uh, then extend uh, the fact that we have to do aptitude tests, that we have to do interviews for people that qualify. We will take all this into consideration. But if that application isn't started by the deadline, then you'll have to be considered for next year's class. I hope that answers your question. So make sure you do the online application and upload all the documents that it requires you to upload. Anything that you cannot get because of the COVID-19 crisis, the JTC will take all of that into consideration and extend deadlines as necessary. I hope that answers your question as well. Um, we, we're we're going to still answer your questions, but there's a couple of things I also want to point out. If everybody is on a computer or if you're on your phone, um, as soon as we're done with this, if you would go to the IBEW webpage, our webpage, IBWLocal26.org, there is a new tab there. That tab has been there for a couple of days. Uh, rather than clutter up the front page with everything, we created a new page. It's called COVID-19. On that tab, it has all of the information that we have posted since the middle of last week, all the links necessary to do uh, how to the CDC, how to keep yourself safe, how to look up information. Uh, we most recently posted the um, agreement from the IBW and NECA. It explains that. There is also a letter on there that explains the um, emergency severance distribution option if you are out of work for more than 30 days um, due to this uh, from March 1st to July 1st. If you're out of work for more than 30 days, um, George and I have a, worked with the trustees to make it possible so that everybody who has an annuity account, now this is one of your retirement pension benefits or it's your annuity benefit, uh, not everybody has it, but if you do have it, you will be able, if you have been unemployed for 30 days because of the coronavirus since March 1st, the, the beginning of the date we put on it was March 1st, and it's to July 1st, but we can extend that if necessary. But if you have been unemployed for 30 days, you will be allowed to access up to 12 weeks of your normal pay at 40 hours a week. Brothers and sisters, I need to be very, very clear about this. This is only something, something you should do in an absolute emergency because this is a retirement account and it has special rules. Any money that is taken out of it will be paid in a lump sum and you will pay taxes on it and if you are under 55, you will have to pay an additional 10% penalty. In the most dire of emergencies, if you are relatively young, all right, and you have enough money in there to do this, you will have plenty of time to get that money back. Don't let your credit get destroyed. Don't lose your home. Apply for unemployment first and do everything that you possibly can to avoid this. But George and I have made it possible that if you have it available, you will be able to access up to 12 weeks pay. After you've accessed that money, it's a one-time lump distribution and there are other criterias. For instance, if you're married, your sp spouse is going to have to agree to this. All right, and you have to be unemployed for the full 30 days up to and including the day you take distribution. If you go back to work the day before they were going to cut you the check, they will not cut you the check. I hope everybody understands that. Tom, I got a good question. Here. What's the question? The question is from Scott Sheriff. If the jobs are still open and brothers and sisters need you or George, how can they get uh, a hold of you or get representation uh, even though the hall will be closed during this time? All right. Once again, Scott, I appreciate the question, and I, I thank you for uh, pulling this to everybody's attention last night. Uh, I, I believe me, I, I truly do. Uh, but the the hall isn't closed. The agents are still working. George and I are still working. Everything is going on. We just could not allow people into the building, and we can't have the finance office operational today. Uh, I've been answering the phone call all day. Uh, people have gotten on the books today. Everything that should be going on has been going on. 
Uh, as it sits right now, every phone call that comes into this building right now is coming to my cell phone. I was answering phone calls until 2.10 this morning, and my first phone call this morning after I got up and took a shower was at 6 o'clock. The only reason my phone isn't going off the hook right now is because there's somebody in the other room with my phone answering all the questions and directing people to the appropriate person. If you have a, a situation where there is a grievance necessary, contact me by email, tmyers at ibewlocal26.org. Contact George. Contact any single agent by email, and you will get a response. All of our emails are the exact same way. It is the first initial of our first name and our last name, followed by at ibewlocal26.org. And available online on the website. And if you go to the website, they're available that you can just click on them. You and also, don't, also, if you're trying to call us, if you call the hall, you should be able to, through the automated you know, system, ask to speak to us or get to our line. And our lines are rolling over to our phones. Yep. So the, I saw that on Facebook last night about how we're not answering the phones. That was not true. We had rolled the lines over and we were available, but no one, you know, I had a few calls. Over. In fact, I, I talked calls. to Brother Sheriff last night about this situation and uh, Cardine Avery and a few other people. So we are trying to do our best. But like Tom said, this is an unusual circumstance, brother and sister. I don't know if anybody has ever experienced anything like this before. We are doing our best to service our members the best we can during this crisis. We are doing what we can, how we can, and when we can. As far as referrals, we've got brothers that are getting laid off. If you've been laid off, take a picture of your termination slip. Send that termination slip to RET Row. Driver's license. Last driver's day. license. And, and your last four digits of your SOCH and send all of that to either Retro or Will Ing. Depending. And, and on depending on whether you're A or R, R, E. And they will process and get you on the books. And you will receive an email. And you will receive an email and it will tell you your situation, your number, so forth and so on. Right now, brothers and sisters, that's the best way we have of doing it. Uh, we are also going to process jobs to our best ability. Uh, is it going to be perfect? I'll tell you, no. It's the, this is the first time we've had to do this. But we are working at getting your you know, services taken care of. So please, brothers and sisters, give us consideration. Give us time. We are doing everything to the best of our ability. Gentlemen, I have another question here from Becca. Gagnon, are workers still working in groups of 10 or larger? How are you monitoring this? What precautions are you putting in place for workers in the field? Would be appreciative about having work, but concerns of exposure to workers in the field? I okay. think I know the answer, but I'd like to hear it too. Oh, absolutely. Becca, uh, I did see your, uh, your posts um, on the Facebook page, and I fully expected you to be here. Okay, so here's how this works. Uh, Local 26 is not the employer of anybody out in the field. Um, if a job site is open, the, the contractor is responsible for making sure that everybody is working in a safe and uh, healthful manner. We send our agents out to the job sites on a regular basis, and I believe there are agents out there. There were agents out yesterday and the day before that and the day before that, and there will be agents out there on Monday. Because of the situation here, most of the agents are dealing with phone calls. All right. If the job site does not have hand sanitizers or if it does have a washing station, we will address that. Um, but we have not received any official notification regarding that. And once again, we have been answering the phones. The local union is not allowed to provide a contractor with any PPE. There are three main reasons for that, and these are OSHA rules, not my rules. One, we do not know the hazard that the employee is facing on the specific job site. Two, we do not know what the proper PPE is to meet that hazard. And three, the contractor is responsible for any and all PPE aside from work shoes. All right? We can't provide it at all. 
that's where we are on that. Does that answer your question? It, it does answer okay. your question. Um, also, I want to remind everybody too, if you are on the books already and you're re trying to re-sign for this month, it's normal. you it's can normal. re-sign online. We've been doing that for years. So make sure that you take care of that before the 25th. Um, we will be working with people during this situation. We understand it's a unusual set of circumstances. So please, brothers and sisters, like I said, we need to all work together to get through this. Uh, we have uh, Rudy Velasquez. I think he was a little late to the uh, broadcast. He's asking again, and maybe want to reiterate because this is one of the number one questions. Mm -hmm. If you ask for a layoff or furlough because you have fear of exposure, mm -hmm. what is your course of action? Um, according to the agreement that we have with the IBW and NECA, uh, if you are in genuine fear and a reasonable person would believe that, they have to grant you the furlough. Um, I have spoken with NECA and uh, I've spoken with their chapter manager, excuse me, um, and he understands it the same way I do. Um, and I asked them specifically, what happens if the contractor says no? Because we all know that we have contractors out there that may do that. He said, then you would file a grievance and it would go through the normal procedures. Right. However, if you are not working, you file for unemployment. But at this time, brothers and sisters, when you have that situation occur, ask for the furlough. Don't and if need be, wait. write it down that you've asked for the furlough and submit it to them, but before you give it to them, make sure you take a picture of it so we have proof that that's what you asked for and have somebody else on the job site witness it. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to cause any trouble, but we want proof that you did ask for the furlough because that is the agreement between IBW and NECA, brothers and sisters. Uh, brothers and sisters, if you just stop showing up to a job that is currently open, You've quit that job. You have to inform them that you feel unsafe. Uh, they have to furlough you or you have to receive a RIF. If you just stop showing up the way our contract is worded and the way it has been interpreted across this nation is if an employee stops showing up to a job that is open, that is a voluntary quit, and that will affect your ability to collect unemployment. At the very least, it will postpone it. All right? Got one more with respect to apprentices. Go ahead. Okay, it uh, looks like we have one from Bry Summerill. I know apprentices have a separate book to sign. If we get a RIF, will there be someone there uh, to get us uh, off the books or on the books? Uh, that's a great question. We too are trying to do everything online. If you were to get laid off as an apprentice or you choose that furlough, according to the statement of policies, you are to inform us by 9 a.m. the next business day, and we'll handle it accordingly. The proper channels would be Chuck Hufton at chufton at jtc26.org. Much like the IBW, you can reach any staff member at the JATC with first initial, last name, at jatc26.org. You can also visit the uh, website for the JATC at www.jatc26.org. We're putting updates on there about classes, about everything, and uh, use that as your avenue in order to contact us. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Brian. Um, uh, Chris, there's one more question. Okay. It's regarding apprentices, yeah. apprenticeship class checks. Um, are they being sent out? Yes, that's a great question. The first thing we did when the stipend checks were issued, any stipend check uh, that was left here, uh, 90 percent of them have been mailed out the other 10 percent will be mailed out today you'll be receiving them there's no need to contact us there's no need to come in and try to get those checks they'll be in the mail the key to that is i hope you have a current address on them if you don't they're going to be returned back to us it's going to slow down that process because we'll have to contact you for a new address and then uh, try to get them back out to you okay um oh also chris one of the many phone calls are actually two of the many phone calls i received today was apparently uh, some people are still looking for their W-2s and they were supposed to come to the building. Uh, will the building, will somebody be available on Monday, assuming that the governor doesn't shut it down for them to come and pick up if they needed to? That's a great question. I will be at one of the facilities uh, every day until I'm told I can't come in here. There will be someone here to do that. If you looking for a W-2, it would be nice if you call ahead of time so we could have it ready. We could then either reissue it out by mail 
or we could hold it for someone to come pick it up, uh, depending on the severity or the situation at that time. All right, let's see what else we've got. Uh, and then we've got a few more things we have to say. All right, uh, any idea? So, oh, um... Replying to Alec Colleen, thank you for answering Eric's question. If I had looked a little bit further down, you would have uh, saved us a little bit of trouble. Um, just ask, the, yes, uh, just guess our, our, our workers, we already answered that one. Our job's still open. Leo, uh, blah, 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 blah. thank you, folks. Uh, I'm a union and been wanting to get electrical work. Okay, Kyle, thank you. Uh, yep, uh, Zach Berg, what doesn't ha who, okay. All right, uh, Zach, so the question is, and, and this is for clarification, um, certain apprentices uh, do not have, so uh, AP1s, AP2s do not have uh, an annuity. Um, R1s through R4 do not have, R5s get them. Apprentices and R5s get a reduced amount put into them. Um, REs have an have a, um, uh, annuity and our W's, but they are different amounts than what the journeyman has. So I don't know what position or classification every person is, so you should know if you have an annuity or not. Um, if you don't, you can certainly call us up and we will find the answer to that question for you. It won't be hard to figure out. Um, but if you do have one, you can go online to Fidelity uh, Net Benefits login and it'll walk you through getting to access to your account. But you do not contact Fidelity if this becomes an issue you would have to contact the EWTF, and we will have further instructions about that put on the COVID-19 tab. All right, and once again, I really want to stress this, brothers and sisters. Do not access your annuity unless you have no choice. Other choice. Using a journeyman electrician as an example, 40 hours at 12 weeks is approximately $23,000. At the average tax rate, with a 10% penalty, you will remove $23,000 from your annuity. It will drop by that much. And after taxes, you will actually only have about $16,000. And while that is enough to get most of us through a couple of months, and it, your credit won't be destroyed, and you will be safe and secure, and it is an option if absolutely necessary, please, brothers and sisters, we all know what has happened to the stock market over the last two and a half weeks. If you take anything out of your annuity, it's likely at a depressed amount, and that will be locked in for that money. And then the rest of it will go back up as time goes on. All right, uh, George and I will uh, be updating the COVID page today uh, with more information. Uh, we're going to ask, answer more questions uh, as needed. We're gonna stay on for as long as we can, but we do actually have a meeting. Pardon me, that was rude. All right, so we're going to answer some more questions. George, I'm going to look at the questions if you have anything you'd I like got, to say. I got one oh, here got from one. Jesse McLaughlin. Jesse? I contacted Chuck immediately after being laid off yesterday uh, at the hall. He said it was close to the second. Does that mean I'm out to the second? Uh, once again, Jesse, we're doing the best we can to get these back up and running, and we're fixing a way to do it remotely. Uh, once we get to clear, uh, as we have for essential personnel, we can bring people back in and we can provide those referral slips. We can take in your pink slips and we can provide the referral slips and we can do it all uh, digitally. It doesn't have to be in person, although that's what we've chosen. We can do it digitally and we have a means of doing that. We just have to execute that and it just takes a little time to get up and running. So just keep in contact with Chuck and uh, everything will work out. Uh, I'd like to uh, chime on to that. Um, a lot of people say, hey, Tom, why haven't you guys gone full digital with this? It's, uh, the honest reason is because a large portion of our membership does not like electronic transactions. I've had a dozen phone calls today about people paying their dues, and I want to talk about that in a moment, um, who do not want to use the app, do not want to, you know, they, they want to write a check, they call me up, they ask me for the dollar amount for the next quarter or for the entire year, and I gave it to them, and they said they'd be mailing us a check. Uh, we can do it if we have a current email address. If you're on the app, we have your email address. But as of now, only about 20, 22% of you have signed up for the app. On the COVID-19 page, front and center is the instructions on how to sign up for the app. You download it, it's called Unions Get It. I won't go through all of it right now, but the instructions are on the COVID-19 tab on our website, not the Facebook page, but the website. All right. Um, now, 
a lot of people and uh, one of our admins has called us up and asked us to explain uh, the comment about, um, hey, the hall is shut down, but you can pay your dues here. Uh, if everybody would please check your calendar, uh, we are coming up on the end of the first quarter. That was an attempt by the admin to let people know who have not yet paid their first quarter that we will still be accepting payments through the app and then on Monday by phone and hopefully if you can come into the office. That was not an attempt by us to say, hey, we're not working, but you still have to pay your dues. We have a lot of members who have called up who have not yet paid their first quarter dues. If it goes past April 1st, it becomes a problem. All right, if you have paid your first quarter dues and you do not pay your second quarter dues before April 1st, you are technically behind. However, there's no penalty for the first month of the quarter. So as long as you get those dues paid by the end of April, there won't be a $30 penalty. At least that's what I was told by the finance people today. But right after April 30th or 31st, the first day of May, you will have a $30 penalty. So that was an attempt to give everybody the ability to pay their dues if they were behind already. Brothers and sisters, the working dues come out of your paycheck, that's 2%. That's what keeps this local afloat. The quarterly dues that you pay, most of it goes to the I.O. We keep $9 out of it for the building fund and the $2 per retiree, which goes right back out to the current retirees. So that money is your membership to the IBEW. That is not the dues that pay Local 26 they keep us in business. And brothers and sisters, you have to understand another faction about that. When you're paying your dues and paying them on time, you're included in on the death benefit through the international. The moment you go past a very short period in the, fir in the quarter, 30 days. 30 days, you have now lost that money. So God forbid something happened to one of you. Your family does not get that money from, from the I.O. From the I.O. You'll still get it from the local. Yes. But there is extra money that could support your family in the, the case of you no longer being with them. We have to understand we need to watch out for not only ourselves but our families too. Here again, why I closed the building down yesterday. It was to protect my members from any possible chance of getting, you know, infected. Now, I don't believe that's the case now, but at that time I didn't know that. So I have to react when I find a problem happening. So please, brothers and sisters, understand something. When it says you need to pay the first quarter dues, they have to be paid before the first quarter starts. The second January quarter 1st. should be paid before the second quarter starts. First. So make sure that you get those dues in because you're protecting yourselves when you're doing that. Because I believe it's $12,500 that you get from the international in a death benefit, God forbid something happened to you. And it would be $25,000 from the local. So, you know, it helps your family when you know you're no longer there so brothers and sisters this is why we stress this all the time about making sure your dues are paid on time it's not because you know we're trying to you know just get your money we're trying to take care of you we're trying to make sure that you're safe we are talking with the contractors all the time about this COVID I've been on the the line with the the NECA director talking with him about his contractors making sure that you are safe. I've been talking to superintendents with the local or with the different contractors making sure that they are doing what's safe and they are doing the best they can too. Because again, remember, this is something that none of us have experienced before. So we're trying to all get through this together. So we have to work together as a team to make that happen. Uh, before I answer this next question, Chris Mullins, I'm going to be asking your, answering your question next. I want to chime in on with that. Uh, I also have been speaking with uh, superintendents and the owners of companies. They've been calling us, uh, asking us for guidance, and we are assisting them in any way that we possibly can. But the single most common comment 
that they are all making is they are trying to keep the jobs open for as long as they can and hopefully throughout this whole thing so that you do not experience a layoff or a furlough. They are only closing them down when they are forced to close them down. It is as simple as that. They will not voluntarily close down a job. They won't do it just because. If they are required to shut it down, they will. But the number one comment I'm receiving is they are trying to keep the jobs open so that you guys don't have to sit home on unemployment. When, when they do close a job down, brothers and sisters, it's not their decision. It's either the decision of the general contractor or it's the decision of the owner. Or now maybe the governor. several several you know situations where <laughs> like the data centers have been shut down. It's because the That's owner the shuts them down. Now here again, we are stressing that we don't know what government facilities are going to do. I'll be honest with you. I've heard some rumors. Do I know whether they're true or not? Don't know. Let's not spread rumors. That's not. But that's not good we have to make sure that we're safe. We have to make sure that we're doing our part to keep these jobs open, and that's what we will do. All right, Chris Mullins, your question: If somebody is out of work due to this and needs money, instead of having them take it out of their annuity, why not offer low interest loans through the credit union and secure those loans with their annuities? First off. Um, it's a very new, uh, novel idea. It's very intuitive, and it, it's actually, you know, you're, you, it shows that you're thinking for one case. All right, that means you cannot use them as collateral for anything. It is money that has been put into a retirement account based upon a collective bargaining agreement. The contractors put that money into an account with your name on it. You don't pay taxes on it. It grows. You have the ability to put it within a couple of uh, mutual funds, but you don't have access to it as if it was a 401k or an IRA. Uh, you're not allowed to use it as collateral. You're not allowed, um, and we've actually asked that question: Can we use that? Can you take a loan against it? It was asked at uh, a union meeting, and we looked it up. You can't. All right. Also, we don't run the credit union. The credit union is a separate organization that utilizes our building and provides a service to our members. We are closely related, but they have to follow the same banking rules that every other credit union in the country can, which basically means that George and I can't go in there and tell them that you're going to offer low interest loans to anybody. All right? So well, as I said, I'm the president questions. of the board for the credit union, and I still have to follow the federal mandated rules for credit unions. I can't change anything because I'm business manager of Local 26 or president of the board. I have to follow the rules just like everybody else does. We will do what we can for you through the credit union, but you have to come in and talk with us about what the possibilities are. George, I think this question might be for you. Has anyone contacted government officials or anyone from the I.O. or has there been any word or mention that there could be any closings or restrictions and that the jobs, including this person's with hundreds of people working because of contractors, aren't made to comply with any standard. We have been in touch with the international, the fourth district international office. And the international. And I have been in touch with the international too. They're like all the rest of us. They are doing what they can at this time we don't know what the government is going to make in the way of decisions. Uh, that is all being talked about through the government you know, facilities themselves. We will be alerted just like everybody else is. Uh, I have talked with as many people as I can about this situation, and everybody tells me that those decisions are being made. So I don't know and a specific answer for that question at this time because I don't know what the governor, what the president, or anyone else is going to do. They haven't made those decisions yet. But, brothers and sisters, you've seen California shut down. You've seen Pennsylvania shut down. I would have to believe there is the possibility of other states following suit. But do I know that to be a fact? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, next question I have here is from uh, Chris Roper. If we decide to take a furlough, how does this play out with the EWTF? I assume you mean your health fund. Um, if you have health insurance today and your bank is full, you will have health insurance for approximately nine months. Uh, if your bank isn't full, uh, you will have it for something less than nine months. The easiest way to find that out would be to call the health and welfare. 
and give them your information and ask them um, how many hours you have available in your bank or what how long will you have insurance if you stop working it's a common question that they get they know how to answer it uh, there's also a portal that you can go on that if you sign up you can actually look it up yourself brothers and sisters as you can imagine the people at the health and welfare are getting a lot of phone calls right now so if you don't get through right away just try again later and please have patience with them they are getting a lot of phone calls from a lot of very anxious and very scared people so give them the benefit of the doubt they are trying to help you okay please make sure you remember that if you need to yell at somebody call me up and yell at me I'm good at it all right brothers and sisters look a lot of us have been working regular and working a lot of hours so if you are in that situation where you've been working on a constant basis over the last few months your bank should be full and that would be 810 hours this is basically nine months so that would equate to you being able to have benefits for nine months so I don't believe the situation is going to last that long I believe this is something that we've got to go through we're going to have to endure this it's probably going to be six weeks or so and then we should be coming out on the other side so we need to hang tough we need to stay together and we need to work with one another again so we can all get through this mutually Ahmad um, you're asking about when the aptitude exams are going to be rescheduled you will be receiving information through the mail yeah everything will be extended uh, anybody who gets the application started prior to the deadline, everything will be extended, everything will be uh, taken care of in an orderly fashion. Aptitude tests uh, will be rescheduled. Interviews will then follow. I also saw another one on here, Eduardo Chicas. Eduardo, uh, great to hear from you. Apprentices who are out of work, aka furlough, they'll, they'll be able to get a layoff and work with a contractor who still has jobs. We're confirming the job calls, as we had some open job calls, but we're confirming them based on the situation. And if that's possible, we will start that process as soon as we can start doing it remotely. We will start that if they are available. Right now, I cannot tell you that until we confirm with the contractors. But good question. Uh, Charles Brutch, I appreciate you um, redoing the question. I didn't understand the first one. Is there going to be a monthly pension decrease with the market um, Pension. Basically, what he's asking are the pensioners should the pensioners expect for their monthly checks to be reduced? No. Simple as that. Um, our fund is strong. Uh, it was made stronger by the actions of our brothers and sisters when they agreed to put a dollar fifty um, in, over the course of the last contract into it. Um, yes, the market has taken a hit. Yes, the fund is down. Uh, but I have spoken to the actuaries. The actuaries say we can easily withstand a ten percent drop if. That's what it is over the course of the year. And brothers and sisters, if we need to put more money into it, uh, we have negotiations coming up in um, uh, less than a year. Less than a year. All right. We will make sure that all of our promises are kept. That is our goal and that is our intention. Uh, there has been no conversation whatsoever, and I am a pension trustee. There has been zero conversation or even thoughts about doing anything to the current pension uh, situation how much the benefit is there has been zero thought on it okay I hope that answers your question all right what about dues do we have more time and rider to pay it all right so one of the questions we have asked the IO um, if you're talking about your quarterly dues because if you're not working you don't owe any of the two percent um, working dues that come to the local if you're talking about your quarterly dues they go to the IO and we have directly asked the IO the question will they be providing an extension or relief from suspension or being dropped because of this crisis local unions across the country have shut their doors we are not the first ones to have done it but we got ours back open within 24 hours all right we cannot give you that extension it is not something that's within our authority to do the IO has made a few changes um, and they have they have the ability and we have asked the question and we are waiting for a response uh, the question has been sent to the fourth district and has been sent to the IO directly by the business manager on your behalf when we get an answer you will get the answer from us but as it is right now union dues are still required to be paid by the beginning of the quarter in which they're due that's a popular question all right uh, hopefully that answers a lot of people's questions yeah that's all a right. lot of people I got one here uh, anybody who was taking uh, this from uh, Giovanni 
Uh, will people receive a credit for the courses taken at JTC? Uh, if things get back to normal, we'll pick up with those classes accordingly. Uh, but we would never hold you responsible for that. Uh, what we would do is uh, give a credit to your trade school account. You would then sign up for the class and not have to pay for it again. Uh, we cannot give you credit for a class that you didn't complete, but we definitely would not make you pay for that class again. So I hope that answers your question, Giovanni. Um, I'm going to make a direct statement to uh, Ms. Listman. I know you're on here. If you could please scroll up the questions uh, to Zach Berg um, and try to reply to him directly um, because I don't know the answer. Uh, it's Zach Berg. He's talking about the uh, changing his password. She That's the other it. thing. She already posted it. All right, I know, but some people have changed their password and they still can't get off. So if you could just please post that again. Thank you very much. Uh, for everybody who has signed on to the app and you for some reason can't get through to it, it's probably because you tried to put the password in incorrectly too many times. Um, you need to contact Ms. Lisbon, um, and she will be able to correct it. She's put the information on the scroll bar here. It just scroll um, up. And just scroll up, and you will find it. Brothers and sisters, everybody is working to make this as smooth as possible for our brothers and sisters. Every single person who receives a paycheck out of this building is doing what they can to make this possible and to make this as smooth as possible for everybody. Thank you very much. We'll see what else we got. I was not aware of the furlough request option. I notified my foreman yesterday that I would exercise 12 quarantine as I live with my senior citizens, high risk parents. Is a furlough request still an option or would I have to return to work first? Um, that is a good question. I do not know that your company would allow you to return to work since you're self-quarantining, but uh, communication is absolutely uh, critical. Call them up and talk to them about it and tell them you didn't know about that option. And if there is a problem, contact me or Tom and we'll see what we can do. Oh, this also brings up uh, the, house, the bill that was signed two nights ago, uh, House Resolution or House Bill 6201. There is language in there that if your children are being kept at home, um, because schools are closed, there is some relief that would come from your employer. That would be in lieu of or instead of unemployment, uh, but it is a limited amount and it's only for a certain number of hours. I'm not a lawyer, but our lawyers are currently looking at it. Uh, we actually, they sent us stuff and we sent them some questions back yesterday, you know, after our executive board meeting. Um, and we're waiting for a response so we can put that up on the webpage and how that would affect you individually based upon your current situation. All right. Here's a great question. Yep. Uh, I think it's an easy one for you, George. Mark Scully, what about a break in service? If we have a shutdown longer than a month, is it a possibility of having a break in service? Uh, they almost have the 400 hours now, so break in service right. shouldn't be a problem throughout the year, Mark. Um, it is not likely that you're going to get a break in service because of this. And if there is a break in service because of this, all you, you will need it. to do is contact my office and I will bridge it for you. And while you may not get the year, there will be no break in service, okay? Yeah, and plus, you know, you're talking about you're in early part of the year. Yeah. This is going to pass, brothers and sisters. This will move on. We will get past this, so we will be back to working later on. So let's endure this. Let's get through it, yeah. and you'll be able to get more hours coming up. Yep, all that work is still there, brothers and sisters. It uh, hasn't the, gone anywhere. It hasn't gone anywhere. Mark, I hope that answered your question. Uh, that allows me to resign. I needed initial, just laid off on Monday. Okay, David Griever. Um, if you are an R worker, um, an RE or an RW, you just need to contact Will Ng uh, at his email. If you are an AJ, you need to contact Rhett Rowe at his email. We mentioned how to do that earlier. You can just go to the web page and look them up. The emails are the same for everybody. It's the first initial, the last name, at IBEWlocal26.org. You will need to send him a copy of your pink slip, a copy of, you, know, you can just take a picture of it with your phone, sure. get a copy of your pink slip and your driver's license, last and then social. the last four of your shows will just get added into the email that you send with those two attachments. You will receive information back from them um, just like you had come down here and signed the book. We just got that ability uh, done sometime at around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock this morning. We, George and I have been here for a very long time. So for those of you who thought we were just, you know, brothers and sisters, home also, also understand <laughs> that option for signing the books is a temporary one. Yes, just like it this, is. The, all the stuff that we're doing. 
Uh, Once this is over, we will move back to the same system we had before. So understand that this is only temporary measures to keep everything moving. Uh, in triplicate here from several members, Scott Sheriff and Giovanni Garcia. Uh, Mr. President, uh, have you made any decisions regarding the next union meeting yet? And if so, could you inform us uh, All right. of, of the date? I knew this question was going to come up, brothers and sisters. I was hoping it wouldn't, uh, but I am not surprised that Brother Sheriff is the one who did it. That guy's got a heart as big as me, um, and he's trying to get everybody the information. So listen up. Um, as it sits right now, uh, the governor of Maryland has restricted any main gatherings to 10 people or less. It is likely that I'm going to have to cancel the meeting. I need to notify the uh, fourth district in writing 48 hours before. I'm hoping that the governor lifts the restriction, uh, but it is likely that the next meeting will be canceled. And if you were at the last meeting, you, you know that I said that and that the reason I held that meeting is because I could and I wanted to make sure that in the event the government made his actions, which he did the following day or two days later, excuse me, um, I would not be able to hold a new a meeting in April. So I wanted to make sure that we had finished all the unfinished business and I want to appreciate everybody who did not introduce new business so that in the event I have to cancel, which is likely the April meeting, uh, at least nobody would be left in limbo. All right. So that was an intentional action on my part. Thank you, Scott, for bringing up that uh, question. I, uh, in fact, brothers and sisters, because of this COVID-19 situation, a lot of stuff has been canceled. So I can tell you right now, most likely the golf outing is going to be canceled. Well, we can tell them what we did at the executive board. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, all, the way through. all right. So uh, just so everybody is aware, uh, because of the COVID-19, um, any, any event but between now and yeah, June, June 30th has been canceled. So that includes the golf outing, uh, that includes the uh, Manassas picnic, that includes the Roanoke picnic, the first one. We will reschedule the Roanoke one for absolute certainty, assuming that we can. Um, we have not trip. yet, and the fishing trip. We have not yet made a decision on the uh, uh, Camp Let's picnic because that's further out. Also, the seminar, retirement seminar was canceled. Well, also. yeah, the retirement seminar was, but that was for April 4th. April 4th. And they all knew about that. Uh, so it's the fishing, sure. it's the fishing, it's the um, Manassas picnic, it's the golf outing, um, and, uh, and whatever else is up through June 30th. Uh, they were all counted. And you might be asking why. Why did we do this now? Um, hey, oh, this might, all might blow, blow over by June 10th and we could do, no. Um, we have to make the payments and, plan. and we have to plan. Um, if we waited until two days before to cancel it, uh, we would have been out all of that money. Um, we are in preservation mode right now uh, because of uh, the looming possibility of unemployment. Uh, we are not going to waste the money of the brothers and sisters of Local 26. So the executive board made the decision to cancel the events through June 30th. Um, and if we need to, we will cancel more. If it turns out that we don't have to and we can reschedule, we absolutely will. The only, one, uh, the only reason I'm so adamant about rescheduling the Roanoke picnic is because those brothers and sisters haven't had a picnic out there in quite some time. And I was happy to see them get that up and moving. Maybe so reschedule that. We may reschedule that one. But the Manassas one, that's too big to reschedule. We will hold it again next year, clearly. Um, and the Camp Let's Picnic, everybody's invited to the picnics. If we need to, we will increase the amount uh, that's available at the Camp Let's Picnic. Come on down. We'll have a good time. All right? So oh. with, the, with that mention of cancellations, uh, it's not official yet uh, because I have to meet with the committee, uh, the JATC and JTTF. Uh, but it looks like it's a good chance uh, the code seminar will be canceled. It looks like there will be a good chance as the commencement uh, ceremonies throughout the nation at universities uh, have been canceled that uh, it's very possible the JATC uh, graduation will be canceled for the same reasons that Tom just mentioned. Uh, there's got to be planning and without being able to make decisions in planning, we don't want to put any money from the JTTF fund uh, at risk. You're in a RISA uh, fund. So I have to do that by law to make sure 
uh, that we don't waste any money due to it being an ERISA fund. So I see some people asking that. Uh, a good question here um, for, for you guys. Uh, can a company lay someone off so they can make room for other employees from other job sites? Ah, okay. Uh, that's, that's a good a, question. That is a very good question. Um, a company can furlough people. Um, a company has always had the ability to lay off somebody on one job site and then move somebody to them. The, the contract is very clear that management has the absolute right uh, to manage their employees and their job sites as they see fit. What they cannot do is they cannot lay off a book one hand if they have a book two hand there unless, and nobody ever wants to read the second part of this paragraph, unless that book two hand was hired out with special skills on the referral or has accepted a foreman job. Whether you like that or not, it is allowed by the contract, and the traditional thing is, is that if every local one hand or book one hand has been asked and they refuse, a uh, book two hand can take the referral. And with portability, uh, oftentimes contractors come in, they bring in leadership, and then they hire everybody from hire everybody uh, from our hall. So, is it possible? Yes. Is it something that we will uh, take easily? No. Uh, as I've said, we've been in communication with the chapter manager, who is our direct point of communication with NECA. Um, and uh, he, has, he has said that they will be working with us to make sure that nobody tries to take advantage of the employees. Um, as simple as that. I don't need to go any further into that. That conversation was a lot deeper. Uh, but he said that NECA, the NECA contractors, will be working together to make sure that no contractor takes advantage of this situation. Uh, mainly because they'd be taking advantage of the contractors that were doing the right thing and playing fair. So it is their, in their best interest to make sure that everybody plays fair. I hope that answered your question. Uh, coming from journeyman, coming from an apprentice, can you take a furlough if you want to, to make sure that you're safe? Maybe we want to reiterate it again. People are coming late to the meeting. Okay. Um, yes, as an apprentice, you will not be penalized if you stay at home and you take a furlough, you must communicate that with the JATC. You must communicate that with your employer in accordance to the rules that you signed up with their company policies. I'm not going to talk about it, AJ, but uh, the journeyman wireman should uh, also communicate, I would imagine. Right. Everybody should communicate with their company as to what they're doing. If you choose to take the furlough because you don't feel safe or whatever, you need to express that to them before you go leaving the job. Okay. Brothers and sisters, make sure that they are informed of your actions and what you're doing. That's the way you can protect yourself. So, All right, additionally, um, so this new thing between the IBW and NECA that allows for furloughs is, is something that is brand new. As you all know, we never recognize furloughs. Whether or not a, a, a a company uh, allowed some or uh, an employee chose to take a two-week vacation um, you know is not something I can uh, talk about but we have never actually recognized the furlough so this is new to us um, however our understanding about it is is they should not fight you on the furlough all right no, if you ask for, or on they cannot fight you on unemployment um, but they should not fight you on the furlough if you ask for it if they do all right, you can still ask for a RIF. All right, and if they don't, at that point, please contact us using the irregular methods, and we will contact the appropriate people, and we will see what can be done about it. As of this moment, it has not been an issue. Okay, and understand, brothers and sisters, that this is a temporary agreement between the IBEW and NECA. This was made by the international offices of both of the organizations, and it has a time limit on it. So they, too, are trying to work with us and, and work together to get through this. So that's why this was put in place. Like Tom said, this is not part of our contract. Furlough has never been part of our contract. So, like I said, temporary situation. All right, uh, Giovanni Garcia, um, just as we were able to have this meeting through live stream for information gathering, would it be possible to hold a monthly meeting in this same fashion with the exception of making it available on the website instead of the public page? Um, no, it is not. Uh, it's a great question. Um, if you were at the meeting last month, you know that we had to uh, take care of some business that was a couple of years old. 
Uh, we have received instruction, or the, excuse me, the IBW has finally caught up with Local 26, and they have set up a um, list of criteria for these types of events. Uh, they must be held in a secured I, a local union building. So the reason we're able to do it is because we have multiple satellite offices. We are not allowed, we are specifically prohibited in writing from the I.O. to allow this to go out on any type of major broadcast that we do not have control over. Alright, so Giovanni as an example, I don't know who you have sitting next to you right now. Um, it could be a non-union contractor, it could be your bride, it could be your brother, it could be your your pet, I don't know, uh, whoever, iguana, all right? Um, when you come to my union halls, all right, or our union halls, I apologize. We know who's there. We know who's there because there is an agent there who is checking the dues receipt of everybody who walks in that door. That is why we are allowed to do what we're doing, and we have received phone calls from multiple locals who have found out about this. They ask us how to do it, and then they called up the I.O. to find out if it's allowed. Um, and then the I.O. sent down this missive. We meet all of the requirements already, so basically they took our requirements, wrote them down, and said this is what you're going to do for everybody. With the added except, with the added information is that they have to, the I.O. has to be made aware of it, and you have to have the permission of the membership to do it. All right? So those are the only differences. Uh, what else we got? Link to the meeting. Uh, you can watch it. If the hall is closed out, uh, Mr. Huat, um, we, we've answered that multiple times. We yeah. expect the hall to be open on Monday. If not, just call the window, the appropriate window directly and uh, or contact them by email. We've m mentioned that multiple times. Uh, they have to contact the OK, got that. You're answering somebody else's question. Uh, your password has been reset to, oh, Zach, uh, your password has been reset. Check your email for more information. Um, been off to, I've been off work with a back issue for a while and the folks in the EWT have been a big help. Uh, ben, I truly appreciate you doing that and I'm going to let them know. All right, thank you very much. Um, understood, I recall this being brought up, just throwing out ideas. Okay, thank you Giovanni, hope they got the answer you were looking for. So, it doesn't look like we have any more questions right now. Um, I want to, um, I don't have my phone, I guess I can pull it up. Coming up Oh, there's a one-hour limit on this thing? There is. Under, understand. Oh, one hour and 30 minutes. We're one hour and we, are, minutes. we are moving forward to make this local run as efficiently as possible in this situation. Our executive board is authorized to make decisions for the local in between this time when we are not going to be able to have a meeting. So that's what we will be doing, and we will inform you of that at the next available meeting. So please, brothers and sisters, we do care about this local and we are keeping an eye on what's going on. We are trying to do our best in everything that we do every day for you and that's why we keep an eye on things the way we do. So please, brothers and sisters, work with us, give us a chance, we are trying to do the best we can. I would also like to add on to what uh, the business manager has said. Uh, he has my full support in everything, and I would like to point out that the executive board has the authority to act in the stead of the membership. Um, I will promise you that the, I'm, I'm the chair of the executive board. The executive board will not do anything um, to move forward uh, traveler cards unless they are an apprentice, which they have to come in anyway, but any travel card will just be held until we can hold normal union meetings again. You have my word on that. We will not be spending any large sums of money. All right, so we want everybody to be aware of it. Okay. Uh, we'll give you a couple more seconds for questions, but we are coming up on that. Apparently, there's a hour and a half cap, and George and I do have a meeting we have to get to. Um, I don't see any more comment. Oh, wait a second. There they go. Uh, I'm not seeing social. Timothy Dobson, you're absolutely right. Um, your your business manager and I have been in close contact uh, for basically the last 72 hours. Uh, we if if we have uh, infected each other, we we've been infected. We are here to keep the business of the local union running. We're here on your behalf, and I cannot touch you, and I don't think the virus can get through the internet. So you're safe. It's a different type of virus. All right. That's a different type of virus. All right. So hopefully you got that. And and Chris, I'm stepping back. All right. Bye. <laughs>
Thanks, Chris. Get about six feet. All right. Uh, thanks for addressing all the members. Yep. Uh, will the apprenticeship be extended for more than five years? Um, Chris, that's a question for you. I do not believe so. I believe the Electrical Alliance uh, made some statements, but I'm going to let the uh, JATC training director answer that. Uh, it's a great question. Um, what we have implemented is that we are in the process, my assistant directors and the instructors are in the process of trying to start uh, remote learning through your LMS where we'll get you back up and running and you will do your lessons and you will take your quizzes and that time will be assigned and be recorded as your instructional hours. So you should not miss your instructional hours. We've also been told you will not be penalized if you do not hit the work hours because of uh, the virus, uh, the COVID-19. So everybody's working in conjunction to make sure that it is seamlessly uh, done. We also didn't have any snow days. So we have a, a gap in there that throughout your five-year apprenticeship and even for the book five people that just finished, and are moving on to night classes, there's plenty of time in there for everybody to get their hours in and get done on time. I don't see it being effective uh, or affecting anybody's time in the apprenticeship. All right, um, Brother Roper, can you close book two? No, we cannot close book two. The first time we refuse to allow somebody who meets the requirements of book two to sign book two, they could sue the local uh, and we would lose. We cannot close book two. However, if there are people on book one who are willing to take the job, it will not get to book two. I hope that answers your question. Uh, do you keep your position on the book, John Sweeney? As long as you continue to re-sign the book, which you can do by email, uh, which you've been able to do by email for a very long time now, absolutely. If the offices are closed, will that affect the apprenticeship deadline? Uh, Huat, we've already answered that question. Please look up. Make sure that uh, the application make, was yeah. started prior to the deadline. Okay. It does. Uh, we'll give you another minute or so if you have any more questions. But while that's going on, uh, I will be making sure that the um, person who is responsible for putting the information we have on the website um, gets this and puts it on the website. Um, if anybody would like to watch it or however that would happen, uh, we will also write out all of the things that we've talked about. You know, in regards to the local. We, cannot, we don't control the JATC. The JATC will provide their own information, and then we will put it on the web page. Um, I do want to point out that we have provided a link for um, just about everything that you could possibly need to make this easier for everybody. You can get in touch with the credit union. You can get in touch with the health and welfare. You can get in touch with us, all the possible things on how to take care of yourself, what the symptoms are, every single thing that might be helpful or might help calm everybody down is on the web page under the COVID-19 thing. It's starting to get a little cluttered. I'm going to ask that the uh, admin try to separate them a little bit uh, so that it, it's easier to read. But um, I want everybody to be aware that that information is there. And that's where we will be adding the information. We also send out a blast. Every time we add something to that tab, we send out a blast on the app. So if you don't have the app, brothers and sisters, now is the time to do it. All right, get it. We're sending out a lot of information rapidly, or you can just keep coming back and checking the website. Uh, we love to have you here, and uh, you can take a look around at the rest of the stuff. Uh, peppered here at the end uh, mm -hmm. multiple times. Uh, maybe you should reiterate. Uh, a lot of people late to the show are asking the process of signing the books, uh, so that mm -hmm. you, since it's different and it's new, and the process of re-signing the books, if uh, you or George could go over that one more time. All right, I'll do this table. one more time. Sure. If you're going to get on the books and you've gotten a termination slip, make sure you take a picture of the termination slip with your phone, take a picture of your driver's license, and send that to whatever agent you're, you know, needing to send it to, if you're an AJ, to Red Row, if you're RWRE, to Will Ng, and also include the last four digits of your social on there. That's the driver's license. I said yeah. the driver's license also. Yeah. Yeah. Send that to them at their email addresses, which you can get off our website. And here again, like Tom said, it's the first initial of our names, and then our last name at IVWLocal26.org. It can also be found on the website. Okay. 
As for re-signs, you've always had the ability to re-sign by email. So send an email to them and say that you would like to re-sign for March. Make sure you do it before the 25th, brothers and sisters, and you will keep your position on the books. Once you send in your stuff to get on the books, they should answer you back with an email letting you know what the situation is, that you're on the books, and you know they'll give you the information you need. Um, uh, this is a this is an important question, um, uh, Sister Reynolds. Can yeah. brothers and sisters covered by a maintenance contract sign the books while they are on furlough? If you are a journeyman electrician or journey person electrician, uh, you can sign our books even if you happen to be working under a maintenance contract. However, if you are a maintenance electrician, you will have to sign our maintenance electrician book. And as everybody knows, those jobs are few and far between. But if you are a journeyman electrician who happens to be working under a maintenance contract, or an RE or an RW who happens to be working under a maintenance contract, you can always come home again and sign your book. All right? So I hope that answers your question, sister. All right? Thanks for the updates. Thanks for the updates. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah me and Chris are going to have a little conversation about him chuckling in the background. We are. It happens. All righty. Brothers and sisters, we've done this today to try to keep you informed. Was it, you know, in the most timely manner that we could make it? Yes, it was. I'm sorry. I have to do this. Sister Hit uh, made this post. How long is this social distancing supposed to last? My hub husband keeps trying to get in the house. <laughs> I just had to. I hear a can of mace. Moving on. on. I'm, JK, I'm sorry. JK, JK, JK. <laughs> it's funny. I'm sorry. All right, brothers and sisters. Like, like Tom that. said, we have a limited time on this, yeah. so we, we actually, need to we move on because we have meetings to go to. I have to talk with contractors and so forth. So please, brothers and sisters, again, I, I'm sorry for the delay in this, but there was time that we had to you know, use to get all the information we could for you. All right, before we sign off, uh, we just got a direct uh, message from uh, Recording Secretary Rich Murphy. Any maintenance electricians, maintenance workers who are actually maintenance electricians, you should reach out to Rich Murphy. He uh, he's the ones that handles all of those contracts, and he has the specific information. All right, Rich is at home working, so uh, he apparently heard that. Okay, uh, so there we go. Um, brothers and sisters, please check on the COVID-19 page. Please keep calling us. I, I did hear some comments this morning that somebody called three or four times today. Um, it is likely that I'm on the, when I'm on the phone or we have four people answering the phones and if 15 phone calls and come in at the same time, it'll go, it'll go to voicemail. Leave a message. I was answering, I was calling brothers and sisters back last night if you leave a message. If you don't leave a message, there's not a whole lot I can do. Uh, I also received a whole bunch of hang-ups. Uh, the phone, I answer, hey, this is Tom Myers, Local 26, how can I help you? Click. All right, brothers and sisters, in this time, if you are expecting to hear a woman's voice or you're expecting to hear Rhett's voice or you're expecting to hear George's voice, take a moment and listen to what the brother or sister is saying or what we're saying because I answer the phone the same way every time. Hello, this is Local 26, Tom Myers, how may I help you? Please and I, I've experienced quite a few of those myself. And brothers and sisters, if you want to talk to us, call us, please. Right. But if you're going to just call us to hang up, look, we're trying to answer everybody's questions, so that takes up time. Yep. That could be one of the situations where somebody else is calling and wants to talk to us, and they are not being able to get through because we're dealing with calls like that. So please, brothers and sisters, if you need to call us, please call us. But if you're going to call us, let's talk. All right, brothers and sisters, everybody be safe. Be, be good safe to one out another. there. Take care of one another. And everybody stay calm. And we brothers will and get sisters, through this. we will get through this. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You can post that if you want to. Yeah, I'll post it.